Welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. This is Matthew King with M King Digital and today we're going to be looking at the Move Tool and everything you can do with the Move Tool. Starting with the learning objectives, by the end of this tutorial, participants will be able to identify the Move Tool in Photoshop and will have gained knowledge of the following. Where to find the Move Tool in the Tools panel and how to access using hotkeys, demonstrate uses of key modifiers, be able to identify the move tool features in the tool options bar. The move tool is located at the very top of the tools panel. When the move tool is selected, the cursor will represent an arrow. The move tool is grouped with the artboard tool. And if you see the artboard tool and not the move tool, then click and hold the left mouse button on the artboard tool. This will make the move tool visible and selectable. It's also possible to access the Move tool using the V key on the keyboard. Again, if the Artboard tool is currently active, then there is another step to bear in mind. Holding down the Shift key whilst pressing the V key will allow you to cycle between tools in the group. Moving on to key modifiers. First of all, the Shift key. Now, holding down the Shift key whilst moving the contents of a layer will enable you to restrict the movement to straight or diagonal lines. This can be useful when accuracy is essential. First begin by left clicking and then dragging, then holding down the shift key. The movement will be constrained, only moving in the initial direction of movement. This will be vertically, horizontally or diagonally. The control key. Now, when you hold down the control key, this will toggle the auto select option. However, when releasing the control or command key, the checkbox value will return to its original state. The alt or option key on Mac. The alt key can be used in conjunction with the move tool to duplicate a layer. First, select the desired layer and then move the cursor over the canvas. Hold down the Alt Option key and you will see that the cursor has changed to a black arrow with a white arrow underneath. Hold the left mouse button whilst dragging as you normally would when moving the contents of a layer, only this time with the Alt key held down. You will see that rather than moving the original content, a duplicate is moved. When the left mouse button is released, a new layer will be created with duplicate content in the new position. At the moment I have here Cobalt 3 selected in the Layers panel. I'm going to move that up to the left hand pocket there. What I want to do is put pool ball free into each pocket whilst keeping them all accurate to the original one's position. So what I need to do is hold down the alt key. Then you will see my cursor has changed and it will show the black arrow with a white arrow underneath it. This is to indicate that it is in copy mode. Now, as well as holding down the alt or the option key on Mac, I can also hold down the shift key, which will constrain the movement. So now if I begin dragging the pull ball to the right, you will see that rather than dragging the original pull ball, I am dragging a copy. And that copy is also staying within alignment to the original pull ball. That's by holding down the shift and the alt key at the same time. Now I want to stop once I get to this pocket and let go. And you will see now I have a layer three, uh, sorry, a pool ball number three copy in the layers panel. Now I want to continue that. So I want to hold down the alt key or option key on Mac, hold down the shift key, left mouse click, and then move the pool ball across. Now I have another duplicate, which I will put in this pocket on the right hand side here. And then I can do the same thing again hold down the option key, hold down the shift key, and then drag downwards. And my movement is constrained to help me align the pull walls. Okay, so next I want to start going, moving to the left hand side. So if we hold down the alt or option key again, and the shift key, and drag across until we reach the middle pocket. Then you will see it's not only aligned against the pocket on the right hand side, but also the pocket at the top side. Okay, so I'm gonna let go there. Just one more time, I'm gonna hold down the Alt or Option key on Mac, hold down the Shift key, and then drag across for one more time. 
and then complete the alignment of all six pockets with the number three pull ball. Okay, now we're going to look at the tool options bar. First, the auto select option. When the auto select option is switched off, then only the content of the currently selected layer will be moved. With auto select turned on, it's possible to select content from a different layer. The auto select option has two modes, layer or group. With group selected, then selecting content from a layer within that group will move content from all layers within that group. Now I wanted to go into more details about the auto select option. So now if I turn the auto select option off, change it to layers, it doesn't really matter at this stage, but I'll change it to layers. And for now it's off. At the moment I have pool ball number two selected. Okay, so I can click on that and move it around. Now, I wouldn't necessarily need to click on it to move around. I could click on pool ball number eight and it will still move pool ball number two, okay? I could click over here somewhere and move pool ball number two. It's on this separate layer and I have that layer selected. Okay, so now if I click on pool ball number three, the layer for pool ball number three, I should say, I can start moving that around. So number three, I can move around. Doesn't matter where I click, it will still move around pool ball number three. I can click on pool ball number eight, it will still move number three. If I switch on the auto select option, I am now able to click on a pool ball and move that one around without actually having to select the layer in the layers panel. I could choose to move pool ball number four and I could just click there and it will become selected. Now you may notice that as I'm doing that, the layer is automatically becoming active for the pool ball that I'm selecting. So if you watch when I click on pool ball number eight, you will see the active layer change in the layers panel, which is the same for all of them. Okay, and we could also do this by group. So I shall make two groups each with three pool balls in it. Okay, so this will be pool balls one, and this will be pool balls two. Okay, so at the moment I have a group of the bottom set of pool balls and a group of the top set, three in each group. So now with the group selected, I can move these as a group but however, wherever I select without auto select on and without it being on layer, I will continue to move the pool balls to set around. However, when I put on the auto select option, I'll keep it on layer. This will select one of the layers from in the group and move that around. But what if I don't want that? What if I want to select it by group and move the group around? So I have the drop down here and I can select group instead of layer, which means when I click up on one of these for set one of pool balls, then that group will now become selected in the layers panel and I can move them all as one set, which is the same for the pool balls down the bottom. I can click on one of them and move all of them around as a set. So now I can switch back off the auto select option the next option that can be set on the tools option bar is the show transform controls. When the show transform controls option is toggled on, the currently selected layer content will show the handles indicated by small squares around the image. That will allow direct manipulation instead of selecting the free transform option from the edit menu. The transform controls can be used to scale the content or change the proportions. When I select the show transform controls, you'll be able to see at the moment I've got a whole group selected. So the transform tool is being shown around the entire group. Now I can move that around. Notice I'm not holding down the shift button so my proportions aren't staying accurate. I can undo that and then hold down the shift and scale the pull balls up and keeping the pr proportions correct. And I can also do that on an individual layer. If I cancel that with that button up there, 
and then select the individual layer for pool ball number four. You will see the control handles have become selected only on pool ball number four. So the same thing applies. I can enlarge the pool ball number four and I can either choose to cancel or I can choose to accept the changes. So if I accept the changes, my pool ball would have been made larger. And if I cancel, and if I switch off the show transform controls, then I will no longer be able to use the transform tool until I either switch it back on again or go to edit free transform. Next, we have a whole bunch of alignment controls. First of all, we need to make sure we have more than one layer selected. Now in the image that you can see on my screen here, I have a pool table with several pool balls on it. Now each pool ball is on a separate layer. If I disable the visibility of one of them, you will see it disappears and then re-enable the visibility and you, you will see it comes back. So each of these pool balls are on a different layer. Now I can move these separately just using the move tool or I can move them all together by selecting all the layers and then moving them around with the move tool again. So now at the moment, these pool balls are all at random positions on the table. What if we want to have them so they're all in a row, okay? So now we can do this using the alignment options on the tool options bar for the move tool. Now it's important to note that all the pool balls do require to be on a separate layer, otherwise this won't work. Also, if you only have one layer selected, then you won't have access to the alignment controls. So you need at least two layers selected in order to make them enabled. So if we select all of the layers and then go up to these alignment controls, we'll go through them each one, one at a time. Now this one is align top edges. What we expect to see when we click on that one is all of the pool balls to be aligned against the top pool ball here. We'll go ahead and click on that. Now as you can see, all the pool balls are all aligned up the top. So I'm going to undo that quickly and then we'll try out the second one. So the second one, align vertical centers. Now if we click on this one, we should expect to see the alignment set all the pool balls into a central position based on where the pool balls are. When clicking on the button, they should be aligned around this area here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click on that. There we go. Based on where the top pool ball and the bottom pool ball are positioned, they become centrally aligned from there. So I will undo that one. And then we'll look at the next alignment control, which is the align bottom edges. I expect you can guess what this one's going to do. This will align our pool balls based on the, the pool ball at the bottom, number two. If we click on that one, you'll see all the pool balls have become aligned at the bottom. So I'm going to undo that one. The same kind of idea applies to these controls. We would need to have at least two layers selected, but in our case, we will have six layers selected, our pool ball layers. Okay, so first of all, we're going to align the left edges. If we click on this one, then the pool balls will be aligned to the left based on the position of pool ball number five. Okay, so if we go ahead and click on that one, you'll see they've all become aligned nicely. I'm going to undo that and then we'll move on to the next one. The next one is align horizontal centers. Now, if we click on that one, we would expect the positions to be aligned based on the central position between pool ball number five and pool ball number seven as the furthest two apart. Okay, so if we go ahead and click on that, then we'll see all our pool balls have become centrally aligned. Okay, so I'm going to undo that quickly. The final one we're going to look at is the align right edges. So we'd expect this one to align our pool balls against the number seven ball here. Okay, so if we click on that one, then you'll see our pool balls have become nicely aligned against the position of where the number seven ball was. Okay, so that's all the alignment options. Let's now take a look at distribution options. So we have this option here to distribute top edges. So as you can see, all our pool balls are in quite a bit of a mess at the moment, quite chaotic. So now we can change that by first of all, going back to our these alignment options. Let's use the align horizontal centers. Now, although we have them nicely aligned centrally, they all seem to be, you've got some on top of others and you know, they're just not spaced out evenly enough, okay? Well, this is where we can use the distribution options to change that. So now if we use this option here, 
to distribute the top edges. So when we press on that option, we can see that all our pull balls have become spaced out nice and evenly. Now these two here didn't move, but all the ones in between have moved. They become spaced evenly apart. The next thing I wanted to show you was the auto align layers option. Now the auto alignment option allows an image to be stitched together where the images overlap. In the picture in front of me, I have Corv Castle, which is in four separate pieces. Each piece is on a different layer, okay, from layer one to layer four. Now at the moment, I only have one of those layers selected and the option does not appear. So if I select all four layers and then look at the tool options bar, at the top here, I have a new option available, which is auto align layers. Once you've made your selection, which in our case is going to be the auto option, as is set by default, then we can click the OK button. Upon clicking the OK button, our image will become aligned based on Photoshop working out each area and how they go together. So now in order for this to work, if I undo a second, there will need to be overlapping details in each image in order to get it to work. But just ensure that when you're taking the photo, you are able to overlap slightly so that Photoshop will be able to work out how to stitch them together and do its computations. Okay, so on to the very final thing on the move tool. These next set of options are for the 3D mode and obviously will only become available when we have something in 3D. So at the moment, I've got a big blue square on a separate layer. So a background in white and a blue square. Turn that off so you can see. White background and blue square on a separate layer. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is go up to this 3D section and you can choose this new 3D extrusion from selected layer. So I've got my blue square selected. Okay, so I can click yes on that option. Our blue square has now been turned into a blue cube. Now, if I switch to this option, this is the rotate the 3D object option. So you can click and hold down outside the blue box and this will rotate the blue box around. Or we can move inside the blue box and we'll have more options become available. So we can move the box around in a 3D space by dragging. We can use options here to rotate the blue box itself. Or we can move on this axis here. And move on that axis there, the set axis. So we've got options available within the blue box that move the blue box itself or we have options to rotate the, the blue box as a whole. So the next option, roll the 3D camera, which allows you to roll the camera in a fixed position. Pan the 3D camera, allows you to pan the 3D camera right, left, or up and down. Slide the camera, allows movement of the camera towards the 3D object or further away. Zoom, the zoom option, allows you to zoom in or out from the object. Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial. I hope it's been helpful. And so now you have increased your knowledge of all the things the Move tool can do. If you like these videos, please subscribe or give the video a like and uh, we'll see you again next time. Thank you very much. Cheers guys, bye bye.